Hey everyone, and welcome back to Flutter from Scratch. In this episode, we'll be starting with some of Flutter's widgets, and taking a bit of an introductory look at how state management works in Flutter. We'll achieve this in three main parts. First, by continuing to look at the widget tree to see how Flutter draws its UI. Then, we'll have a look at how we can manage our state using the block pattern. This can be a little bit difficult, so I've made some animations to try and explain it in an easy way. And finally, we'll make our very first button. So let's make a start. In our last episode, where we left off, we had the slideshow.dart open, and we were up to about line 40. We'll continue there now. So now, let's have a look at the widget tree on this slideshow widget that we're currently on. I'll just go ahead and expand this out a little bit so we can see a little bit more. So looking at our slideshow page widget, we can see here that we have our build function for our widget, which controls what is drawn on the screen. So we'll take this one step at a time and we'll see what's actually being drawn here. The first thing we do is we get a reference to our slideshow block. So that's like a view model in this instance, and it controls all the business logic to do with this page. Then we have this thing here called a block listener, and then a block builder. These two widgets don't actually affect the rendering to the page, as in they don't really draw new widgets like text or pictures or whatever. They're just used so you can implement the block pattern. You might be there thinking to yourself, Man, this guy is talking about the block pattern a lot. What is it? And what does it have to do with the topic at hand, which is trying to learn Flutter from scratch? So, let's have a look at how a block works. A block is normally associated to a widget, and it's usually associated with an initial state. In this case, we have a state with the text, which is just cats are okay. We have a button on our UI here, which has I heartily disagree written on it. So let's have a look at what happens when the user taps on that button. An event is dispatched into that block called the disagree event. The block makes a decision and then it yields a new state. And this state has the text, actually, they're amazing. Once that new state is yielded, we can see that the UI actually updates to reflect that change. That's pretty much how it works in a very, very small nutshell. So looking at our first widget here in the widget tree, we can see that we have something called an animated switcher. So what is an animated switcher? So we learned before that our UI updates when the state changes. So without an animated switcher widget, when our state changes, our widgets will just be redrawn, so essentially they'll just cut directly from one to the other. If we look on the left at the example here, we'll start with widget one, the state will update, it'll go straight to two, and then if it updates again, it'll go straight to widget number three. But with an animated switcher widget? Well, on the right, we can see that we'll start again with widget number one, but we get this nice transition to widget number two, before finally getting another nice transition to widget number three. And a lot of that is done without really any hard work, and I'll show you how. So for our animated switcher here, we can see that we've specified a duration of one second, which just means it'll take one second to make the transition between widgets. The line beneath that, we are doing a conditional check on the state of the block. This just means if the current state of the block is defined sonder state, then we want to render the definition of the word sonder as it appears to the right here. As you can see, we have the pronunciation, and then we have the definition, and then we have a button with experience written on it. If we try and correlate that to what we see on the left, we'll see that we have this little function here that renders that text in a certain way, and then we have some padding, and then the text for how to pronounce the word sonder. We've themed that appropriately, as you can see, 
We've specified it with the color gray to give it a certain look. And we've also reused the headline five style. As well as that, we also have here the definition of what the word sonder means, as you can see here written over on the right. Again, we've specified a certain style for that. We've copied the body text to preset font, but we've made the color of the font white and we've made it size 20. And we've also aligned it in the center. The next and final thing that we have in our column widget is this raised button, which we can see at the bottom of our UI here, the experience button. Now, as we can see, I've kind of styled this button a little bit differently to give it a look that'll fit in with the rest of the app. How I've achieved that is I've used the shape parameter on the raise button to say I want to have a rounded rectangle border and specify the radius for that border and the color. I want the color of the button to be black but it's going to have a white border as we can see here. And then I wanted to have some padding to sort of space that button out a little bit more from the edges. And the text of that button is of course experience. Again, we've just copied the style of the body text to style, but then we've made the color of it white. So ultimately in the end, we've wound up with the button that looks like as we see on the right, just experience with a cool, and a cool little pill shape. Of course, any of these are configurable if you wanted to make it six radius, for instance, you could change it to that, you could change it to 12, and every time you change it, of course, through hot reload, it will update to reflect those changes. The same thing goes for colors. If you wanna have it a different color, that's completely possible. So that's how our button looks. But what about the functionality? What do we do when the button gets pressed? Well, we can see here that again, in our raise button widget, we have another parameter, which is the on press parameter. Now, all this does is it sends into our slideshow block the event of start slideshow event. All we're saying is we just wanna start the slideshow now. Do you remember earlier how I demonstrated an event coming into the block and the block in turn yielding a new state? Well, that's the start of that process, the event going into the block but what happens when that event is received by the block? What does it do with it? And how does it give us a new state to deal with? To the left of our screen, we can see here that we have these four files for our slideshow block. The top file, block.dart, is what's known as a barrel file. It simply exists to export the block, event, and state dart files, so in other areas of your project, you can just import that barrel file instead of importing three separate Dart files. Next, we have our slideshow block, which is where events are transformed into states. We have our slideshow event file, which lists all of the events that are possible for this block. A good example of an event would be if a button is pushed. And finally, we have our slideshow state file, which contains all possible states that this block can be in. So using this knowledge, let's see how an event turns into a state. On line 76 here, we can see that we're sending an event into that block. So having a look at that block, as we can do by double clicking on it on the left hand side, we can see that when the event here, it starts slideshow event, the first thing we do is we load the starting image from the disk then we yield the state of image loaded state with the image as a parameter. Then we wait for eight seconds before we start a timer. Starting this timer will send a new event into the block every eight seconds, which will in turn show a new picture. The way it does that is by just adding the change picture event every eight seconds. And again, that event's up here. If the event is change picture event, then we get the next picture. And then once it's done, it simply yields that state again with the array of bytes as a parameter. And that's all that blocks really do. Just take events and map them to states. 
In the next episode, we'll have a look at how we can test our blocks and our app. Thanks for taking the time to join me on the third episode of Flutter from Scratch. Next time, we'll see how we can test our app. I look forward to seeing you then.